SBA EIDL update, bullshit or bust, because that's what's going on right now. We have, as per usual, a packed agenda, and we're going to count how many times do I go off script? Because, I mean, I can read, but I, I, I guess I have short-term memory. My eyes aren't so good. She's Look. already gone off script. <laughs> Hello, New Jersey. Hey, David in California. We're going to be talking about tonight forgiveness update for the COVID e, COVID-19 EIDL loan. We're going to be talking about collateral confusion. <laughs> getting stuff done at the SBA because that's a conundrum. Not simple. That's when I go like this. Yeah. ERC update. The program is not a scam, but there are scammers. We're going to get into that as well. The scam is the scammers because that's actually what it says on the script, which she didn't read just now. I kind of just, you know, I like to improvise. I like to speak extemporaneously because I can actually say that word because it's like, can I buy a vowel? Can you spell P it? Yes, but not I right dare now. You. Not right now. PPP right now. forgiveness. It's not too late. And finally, hello today. I put together Simple Sense for Small Business because it is our goal for you to not need us. Because when people come to us, the problem has already happened. So we try to create some information, try to gather some intel so that you can be proactive in your business. And one of them is setting up a solid business meeting to discuss the very hard truths that happen in business. It's $10. I've actually never sold anything for $10 in my life. I mean, when she says it's $10, she forgot to say, so we're offering it as a download right now on this broadcast. And it costs $10. And it costs $10. Someone bought it today. So I she guess improvised I can that whole now. part. Yes, David, I David, can you tell? I know. I can. Yes. A lot of people can tell that I, oh my gosh. I make stuff up. So okay. let, me, let me get this straight. Okay. Hello from New Jersey. Is a burger joint? Hey! Oh, man. Oh. Uh, now I want a burger. Wait, we had burgers. We had a burger, had burger, had burger for but dinner. I bet you they're not as good as uh, the real burger. What time burger do you guys close? Because, you know, maybe when the show's over, we it'll take us two hours, two hours and 20 to get there, but we'll get there. We Where in Jersey? I grew up going down the shore. I loved it. It was great. Okay, if it's down the shore, it could take us five hours to get there. But Yeah, but so this is our newest product that has nothing to do with the IDL, but has everything to do with running a business. I mean, Do you want to go part, back on soul. the script and tell them how you were inspired to create this product? Yes. Gosh, oh, my is, gosh. This is why I write a script. This is why. I don't know why. But I, all right. It literally says it on the script right there. This is the real hook of this show. No, it's not. It, I am the real hook of this show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not even going to. I have all kinds of thoughts. Anyway, we saved the business from being dissolved yesterday. That was not the plan. We didn't even know that this chaos was going to ensue right in front of our eyes. Well, it wasn't chaos. It was just it, this emergency. Soon, it was an emergency. It was an emergency, impromptu emergency. So what happened was we were discussing, you know, just I was doing my underwriter thing where I ask questions to kind of dig down deep into the rubble of why we're together and doing this work with and a client who hired us to assist with basic business consulting right for a lot of operational and marketing type of advice yes and she's in connecticut so that was kind of a, that's a luxury for us we actually got to use our office you know meeting once. clients in real life at, at our offices i not, hadn't vacuumed it in three you years stop interrupting okay sorry if you can go off script, why can't I go off script? <laughs> because you can't go off, off script interrupting me being off script. That's the difference. Okay. Wait, what? So anyway, Trevor, That's in me. his ultimate wisdom, had uh, an agenda that was two pages. Like, it was like this. It was and five, but okay. It was, it was well done. It was very productive. And I said... Okay, you know what? There's something here because we covered so much ground in this meeting and I made it into a workbook. You forgot to tell them why there was an emergency with the client. She was the business was being dissolved. She didn't file. Have you ever watched I Love Lucy? <laughs> Because a lot of this life with this beautiful girl is what I call life with Linda. <laughs> Coming to Hulu <laughs> in the autumn of 2024. So so this is what happened. 
she hadn't filed her annual report with the state. Now, which we discovered by accident. Which we discovered by accident. But this is the the kicker. She thought, her, oh, she's like, oh, no, my, my accountant handles it. David feels this, feels this But deeply. David's a, a real accountant. David's, yes. David's like Batman compared yes. to her accountant. So. Who's not a CPA. Not only did, was the uh, annual report not filed for 2023, it hadn't been filed for three years. And it was, you know, red letter across saying pending dissolution. So luckily we were able to engage with that transaction because we are agents of the state to set up corporations. Yes, and you are part of Aurora Consulting. So there you go. <laughs> and anyway, so, but that's Dissolved, not David. The Secretary not of State was about to dissolve the yeah. LLC, not suspend. Oh, no, I'm sorry about your burger pit is closed now. Oh, closed, closed, now, closed tonight. now. Oh, okay. You know, we hear from businesses that are closed now, so I get a little nervous. Okay. But that's not why people are here. People are here to talk about EIDL, forgiveness, uh, various requirements of the loan agreement that you may or may not understand or want to understand. Okay, don't step all over my script. Okay, go. All right. <sighs> I am going to put the link into the workbook. I'm, so I'm already exhausted. I haven't even really spoken Oops, yet. I didn't mean to. That was so buy our $10 guidebook because it's uh, based on the, the agenda I put together for the meeting with this business client. Things that business owners don't think about. Like we, I don't know about we, but I like to think about the really boring shit that people don't think about with business. And uh, I proselytize about that frequently and often. Uh, as you've seen me here on this broadcast previously, when I lost my mind over the SBA, I also had that reaction when I find out about small business owners who who don't attend to the basics, which are so simple and commonsensical. Yeah. That's why we call it Simple Sense for Small Business. And we have another YouTube channel called Simple Sense for Small Business. Yes. Where we talk about the boring and mundane things that you need to do. Uh, but... Before we launch into, we have a lot to cover tonight. Forgiveness update. Some interesting and juicy tidbits coming out of Washington, D.C. about oh, forgiveness. Oh, God, this is so good. Uh, getting stuff done with the SBA. Nothing is simple. I already went through this. I know, but, you know, it felt like it didn't, though. And, of course, the ERC, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about PPP forgiveness and peppering throughout our broadcast tonight we will keep reminding you about our reputation which i'm going to start out with right now you need to know who we are like david knows who we are uh david worked with us uh, uh with his clients during the pandemic and the information that we provide on these live shows and if you watch our youtube channel it, that information is derived from doing the work in the real world, in real time, mm -hmm. you know, week in and week out. And it has been that way for us pretty much since April of 2020. So when we come on here and we uh, lose our minds about the SBA or small business owners ha handling things, or we give advice on the right way to do things and et cetera. Thanks, David. Appreciate wow. that. Wow, that's huge. And uh, when we do that, it's because we, we are literally experiencing it in real time. And as you will see, uh, something we're going to share tonight talking about the confusion about collateral on a COVID-19 EIDL. That was inspired literally by a one-hour consultation call we had today with a business owner in Texas who was terrified that she couldn't sell her car for fear that the SBA considered it an asset. And I put her mind at ease and I read the loan agreement. So, uh, and, and then last week I had to speak to the SBA a couple of times. I spoke to the SBA on Monday with a couple of general questions. We work on natural disaster loans and applications. Uh, we're working on COVID-19 EIDLs where uh, different scenarios. One client had a business partner who embezzled the money. We assisted him. Another client who couldn't figure out how to set up the portal. We did that. Uh, we have a client who hired us just yesterday uh, for a, a franchise, a sandwich 
cent franchise. We won't mention the name. And they are selling the business, but they have a COVID-19 EIDL. So they spoke to the SBA, and as usual, the SBA confused the living but Jesus out of them. And we're going to sort that out and fill out the paperwork. So when we say who we are, it's because y'all are telling us that. Because you don't have to believe us when we tell you how great we are. <laughs> Scroll the reviews, Linda. Well, we have. Just go to Google and read the reviews. And David, if you have a Sony Betamax, God bless you. Because that capstan motor burns out faster than anything. The fact that you have one 40 years later is testament to your skills and maintenance, apparently. Okay. okay. So let's roll some reviews. Because when we tell you how awesome we are, don't believe us. Well, I don't. I only have the one I just put up, which is this one, and which just came in the other day. And then this was well, after. Can you put it back so people can actually read it? And that, well, I already had it up. And then this one is from uh, the call after the call today, where she was like, "I not knowing stuff." Not knowing stuff has not been helpful, right? So, and that's- Well, she was terrified of a couple of things. First of all, the business has been struggling and she's showing a net loss and she's got some crazy idea, um, probably putting her head by the SBA on a phone call that the SBA is gonna come in and shut down her business because she's not making a profit. And I said, no, that doesn't work like that. And then the second thing was uh, selling the car because she was afraid it was considered an asset and it wasn't. Um, so folks, write these reviews. We have something like 260 odd reviews. And yes, we do ask you all to write reviews. We do that because we know one thing about reviews, you have to ask people to do it, but people don't have to do it. And the fact that we have over 250, 260 reviews, if, if you know nothing else about us, if you watch our videos, you think we're full of shit, but if you read those reviews and you still think we are, then uh, and you still don't trust us, please click over to the other channels because the one thing that we will never do, uh, and, and this is why we appreciate folks like you all, uh, David, and et cetera, is, is because you're part of an exclusive club. <laughs> you are. I love that. Oh, my gosh. You're part well, of an exclusive club, and that club is the... Uh, uh, you believe in truth and expertise club as opposed to you want to be misled by fantastical, phantasmagorical, clickbait fantasies of realities that will never come to be. Well, also as during the pandemic, when people were telling me that the guys on the other YouTube channels were saying, oh, the 4506 form is going to go away. But also you care about your business and that's who we like to do business with. We like to do business with people who understand that it's not easy to run a business and we can't all be good at everything. And we know we're not good at everything. So, you know, what? No, you're everything. not. Truth seeker. Did you, did you, what wait a second. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I'm not good at everything. Truth. Did you not tell me this morning, this afternoon at lunch, literally when I spooned that perfect poach egg on top of your curried beef and sweet potatoes and chickpeas you like good. that poach egg is perfect it was and good. are you gonna try to sit here and tell me in front of millions of people you're not that good at everything you're just not it's not it's not humanly possible hey okay. girlfriend i do the laundry and i know how to fold your panties <laughs> okay we're gonna edit that part out in post-production thank you very leave much in, leave it in, leave it in. <laughs> All right. So Can we get you're all some... part of an exclusive club. And we thank you for that. And we thank you for understanding our value. Look, we, we know who the other folks are. You know, Ryder and Skip, I, I have a lot of respect for them. Uh, apparently, they have some kind of a direct connection behind the scenes with SBA, which is very valuable because I learn things from, from Ryder and at, at Skip. And, and they were helpful during the pandemic for me. I would watch their videos just as you all watch mine. And I would pick up bits and pieces here and there. But what I do know is that when it comes down to more of the nitty gritty of process, of filling out a form, uh, you know, or when I tell you I will teach you how to speak to the SBA, which is a whole chapter in our, road, our blueprint post-closing guidebook, it's because I successfully have spoken to hundreds, if not thousands, of SBA agents. Feels since like thousands. 2020. And I've often been on the phone where, you know, typically when I call the SBA, I have to have the client on the phone to authorize me to speak 
authorized the SBA to, to give them permission to speak with me. Um, and I have had many compliments from the clients at the end of the call saying, holy cow, you made that so easy. And mm -hmm. you got the answer to the questions. And then on the other side of it, I've had SBA agents tell me, Trevor, you are better informed than many of my colleagues here yeah. at the SBA. So we thank you for tuning in and we thank you for watching our videos and subscribing and hitting the bell and buying our products. You know, we you don't know, we don't provide the products because it's fun to to produce them yes, and is. create them. It's not always fun. There's a lot of minutia. There's a lot of minutia with minutia. with with creating them. But we do want you to have the information and it does you know warm our hearts a bit when people invest in the knowledge that we have been gathering for more than five years because we were doing business financing pre-covid and we saw how businesses didn't know about the business loan process and then throw in a pandemic and the an sba diy a business loan and business owners were like oh, i don't know how to do this and of course you and don't. They, they, <laughs> they cast about all over the internet looking for information and i said to linda literally on march 18th 2020 there's going to be a lot of junk a lot of scammers a lot of sharks and there are going to be a lot of people giving bad mm -hmm. information for their own you know self-validation uh and we have to give accurate information so that's why we appreciate all of you we know we are not for everyone we are and not we, we like it that way we love it that way we only want you folks the members of the club <laughs> so thanks for being here the people who tune in are you know we know that you are you're a rare commodity of folks that are trying to take care of business in business for your business and you trust so. experts and you you you, you know i could easily go to home depot and you know buy all the stuff and fix it myself or i could reach out to ron who was the guy who built most of this house mm -hmm. and the library shelves behind this wall that i designed ron built them mm -hmm. so he's an expert and that's that's who we are and we thank you for tuning in so okay. let's get right let's to into eidl forgiveness update, update defaulted loans now you, you guys you need to get settled in because there is a lot of meat <sighs> that's about to come off this bone uh with regard to the intel you've gathered right about this well one of our clients or is it the di a different topic <laughs> no that's the, one of our clients uh sent us a link to a youtube video uh that they came across a very short video like a minute 45 of a congressional hearing uh featuring everyone's pal who you've heard me speak about a couple of times on our broadcast the sba's inspector general himself mr hannibal ware and he was testifying in front of some kind of congressional uh committee and one of the congress people put to forth the claim that quote 114 billion dollars of COVID-19 EIDLs are in default or liquidation, end quote. To which Mr. Ware rightly responded, yes, he was aware of that statistic, but no, he doesn't have any detail. And the reason he doesn't have any detail, Congressperson, is because the Office of Inspector General does not handle collections. Mm -hmm. The SBA has a different, you know, has an actual division for that. Uh, they collect the payments. And one thing that I know from my experience with government loans and my mortgage banking experience is that statistics of this nature uh, are bandied about too often by people who are unaware of the context, right? Mm -hmm. So the congressperson said these loans are in default or liquidation. He said, he said so, so roughly half of all the COVID-19 EIDLs uh, default or liquidation. Okay. Context, 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 because and, and, and Congress, please look in the mirror. Mm. Reauthorize the SBA. Yeah. Okay. Give them more money so they can hire more people, so they can improve their systems, improve their technology. Because the next thing when you want. say default or liquidation, that does not necessarily mean 
that the loans will never be paid back. Okay? Mm -hmm. Default or liquidation, potentially, I have not seen the report with the statistics, and I don't know if SBA cites the subtext below default and below liquidation, but I know in my experience as a banker, what it tends to include can be loans that people have requested the six-month hardship accommodation, where their payments have been lowered by as much as 90% down to a minimum of $25 for six months at a time. So does the SBA consider those loans in default or liquidation? Does liquidation include businesses such as the client who hired us yesterday who have sold mm. the business and paid off the loan? We just closed the transaction. Uh, the, the loan was paid in full on June 24th for a client who was selling assets of the business that were collateralized by the SBA and the SBA required the client to use proceeds of the sale to pay off the entire EIDL loan balance of $90,000. And so does that consider does the SBA consider that loan to be liquidated because you know is the SBA suddenly going around and seizing assets so we're going to talk about collateral and assets in a moment. You know so again what I've discovered in my many years in in the financing business is the politicians love a, a a big big word game of neon lights that can draw attention to something and make them in men, in not all cases but some cases make them look smarter than they are or more informed than they are all we ask congress to do is reauthorize the sba give them more money and look in the mirror congress because first of all asking inspector general where was the wrong person to ask the SBA has people who are in charge of that division of collecting. Uh, maybe ask the administrator of the SBA, Isabella Casillas Guzman. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe ask Mr. Uh, Sanchez, who runs the disaster loan division, uh, not the inspector general, whose job is primarily looking at systems that are failing and fraud. Right. Okay. And you see what the congressperson was doing was drawing the line between default and liquidation, $115 billion, and fraud. Uh. So when people reach out to us, they say, are these loans going to be forgiven? Is the SBA forgiving these loans? First of all, as we've said before, the SBA does not have the regulatory authority to forgive the loans. Congress took that away thanks to Hurricane Katrina and how they modified the disaster loan program. Uh, and when you say Congress, can you do forgiveness? The Congress is focusing on fraud because Mr. Ware and his cohort are creating a big stir in the newspapers. In fact, the New York Times is talking about it now. Do you have the, the link to the I New York Times? I do have the link to the New York Times. So not only is the is Mr. Ware in the Congress talking about fraud, 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 instead of saying these poor small business owners are still struggling to well, survive. This is what I wanted to ask you this question. What Hold I, on. I was on a rant there. I know you they were. They were on a struggling to survive. Can we find a way to give these business owners some relief? Yeah. Maybe not forgiveness, but maybe longer deferments, maybe waiving the interest, maybe lowering the interest rate. You can do that, Congress. It's called loan modification. Maybe doing that and supporting the small business owners that you all in Congress say are the backbone of the American economy. And my head is exploding now. Okay, calm down. Your face is turning red. It's insane. Okay, so this is the question I have that, that you may, because you do a lot more research of this. Okay. The program was closed May of 2022. What I don't understand logically is why did they close the program when technically COVID wasn't declared over yet? Well, because they ran out of money. Well, they, but did they though? They did. But they still have money. No, no, the, no, no, SBA no. still has money to, for natural no, disasters, no, no, the ideal no, program. No, no, no. The Congress, again, mm -hmm. allocated under the CARES Act <clears throat> in 2020. The COVID CARES Act, Congress allocated a tranche of money. 
to be used on all sorts of things, including, as we'll talk about in a moment, PPP and ERC and Restaurant Relief Fund and Shuttered Venue Mm -hmm. and the COVID-19 EIDL program. A certain amount was allocated to that program. When the bucket was empty and the last drop was poured out, that was it. It was over. But as we've said before... They've clawed back, according to Mr. Ware's office. So where nine is nine billion dollars? So what are they doing? What with are they that? doing with that? Because I'm pretty sure David DeYoung, the CPA out there in California, knows more than a few business owners who never received the money, oh, didn't yeah. receive enough. We know people, or would like to come back and request more money to continue to recover from the pandemic. Okay. Right? So I put some links into the comments for other references of videos, articles about what's being discussed, what's not being discussed. And so there it is. Okay, what's next? We have our little script here. All right, COVID-19 EIDL collateral confusion. So again, you know, if you don't believe us, go read our reviews, watch our videos, and you will discover that we actually know what we're talking about. And a lot of it comes from our previous world experiences, insurance broker over here, mortgage guy over here. And that experience infused how we worked with clients. I always miss the during collateral. the pan- pandemic. Collateral. A- it's I literally need to buy spelled. A it's, I need it's to buy a vowel. So spelled right this was there. added in. Like I don't know why it's not a banner. Collateral. Okay. okay. Do you want me, do you want my glasses? No. Keep going. But don't be as boring, okay? Because that was like ah uh, yawn fest. Oh, should we tell everyone we have a we we do have a, a guest who is going to be reappearing on a regular basis. We do. It's the elephant in the oh, room. <laughs> the elephant in the room. We got such a kick out of that last week or two weeks Pope, ago that we, we may elephant. we may have that as a, a regular prop to our show. There you go. Well, going back to collateral confusions, I was on the phone today. You know, we we offer. Uh, paid one hour phone consultations. You can pay for an hour of my brain uh, on the phone to answer your questions about a whole host of things, not necessarily just the COVID-19 EIDL. I answer questions about PPP forgiveness, ERC, general business consulting things, natural disaster loans. Uh, Today, the call was about a uh, COVID-19 EIDL. And as I stated earlier, the business owner was afraid nay terrified nay losing sleep every night terrified that she could not sell her car because she thought the sba considered it an asset and so i i I told her like five different times it's it's not an asset i said i'll tell you what let's read the definition of collateral together on the loan agreement because she said she called the sba she couldn't get a straight answer and they just sent her a copy of her loan agreement I said, well, so let's read that. And can you call that up on yes. the screen? All right. All right. So I read this section, which is on page two of the COVID-19 EIDL loan authorization agreement. And the section's about collateral. And I was, as I was reading the definition and explaining it to her in, in you know, not legalese, plain English, I got to that section, which is now gone, that section right there. And I saw that <laughs> word personal property and i went holy blink that's why so many people are freaking out over collateral freaking out over personal guarantees freaking out the sba is coming after their bank account their new doily set they bought for their dining room you know their kid's puppy dog because the loan agreement says personal property. You want to back up? It's not personal property, folks. It's business property. So it says personal property. But I'll tell you what. <laughs> if you look at the paragraph above where it says payment terms, I can't really read it from here because of the... If you, I don't know if you can make it larger. I can... Um, well, I, I would have to say hold, please. And... I love that she does this. Go to watch this. This is this is amazing when she does this thing. Okay, so here it is. Okay, here she goes. This is this is my girl Linda Ray. 
and I'm gonna go like this. No, it's a paragraph above it. Oh, above it? Yeah, above it. I can read it over here. Each the payment, payment terms. To stop. E each payment will be made when due, even if at the time full. Okay. Which is okay, it? This I, got it I got it. I got it. So in the paragraph above, don't don't close it. Under payment terms, it oh. says. Mm -hmm. The second bullet point says each payment will be made when due, even if don't. Please, I know. please stop. Please I got stop. It. Stop. <laughs> Once again, folks, just as a reminder, Living with Linda is coming to Hulu in the fall of 2024. All right, well, if you don't need oh, yeah. it up here, okay. I'm taking the okay. banner down. Each payment will be made when due, even if at that time the full amount of the loan has not yet been advanced or the authorized amount of the loan has been reduced. What does that mean? You know what that means? That's in the case of a natural disaster. Mm -hmm. Because what an SBA, what the SBA does in a natural disaster loan application is disperses the first $25,000 of the loan pretty quickly. You may not have all of your documents, all of your ducks in a row, etc. Maybe you were approved for, let's say, $75,000 for a natural disaster loan, but the SBA will very quickly get $25,000 dispersed and into your hands. The other balance of the loan, though, has doesn't get dispersed until you've met their other document requirements or a secondary level of underwriting or whatever their internal process is. So what this paragraph about payment, about the full amount not being dispersed, tells me I put it up here. Is that this loan agreement, as I have said many times during the pandemic, is has not been modified to reflect the unique circumstance of the pandemic. You see, this is a natural disaster loan agreement. And so, in a natural disaster loan, because they offer natural disaster loans to homeowners and renters, personal property. But again, instead of hiring attorneys who actually graduated from law school, sorry, did I say that out loud? Uh, and to, to read this and to vet it and, and properly write it, They've got that word personal, and I know David is saying it is business personal property. Well, I also want to but, interject. But David, the, the loan agreement does not say the words business, business personal, personal property. property. It just is personal property. And I also want to add, as an insurance broker and have been licensed for over 20 years, interestingly enough, personal property on a business insurance policy, it still does in places say personal property on a business policy. You know, and and they that's where they consider. I actually don't remember how archaic this might be that they reference, because if it's a business, it's all business property. But they're actually talking about you know furnishings and equipment and desks and stuff like that. That things are that are that are you can pick up and move out of the well, office. That, okay, so that is cited in the same paragraph as collateral in a different part. It says equipment. Okay. Okay, so... Well, I have that... Computers, printing press, you know, 3D printers, you know, okay. tow trucks, forklifts, equipment. Yeah. This is personal property. So I can understand why so many people out there in the world and the internet are freaking out if they've read that paragraph and they're scaring the bejesus out of their fellow COVID-19 ideal borrowers that the SBA is coming after your retirement account. Mm -hmm. Or because anything that, that's personal. Or in the case of this business owner in Texas this, this afternoon, she was terrified that she couldn't sell her personal car with a payment of $1,200 a month, which is frankly killing her. She wants to get rid of the car so she can buy a cheaper car and lower her expenses uh, so she can dedicate you know, more revenue into the business. And she's like, I'm afraid to... So I said, well, is the car in the name of the LLC? She said, no, it's in my name. I said, well, then you can sell it. But I can understand because in this paragraph, um, yes, it says as defined by the Uniform Commercial Code. So David... And Linda bring up two very important elements here. Linda talked about the insurance policy. David's bringing out some other stuff, uniform commercial code. Here's the thing. Small business owners don't understand this shit. And the SBA doesn't explain it to them. Mm -mm. And so we spend a lot of our time now on these broadcasts and then during the pandemic trying to allay people's fears mm -hmm. about things that they think are the case, which is not true. And on the converse, which is why we have our blueprint, our post-closing blueprint, 
to talk about the real responsibilities, the real restrictions, the real requirements you have. We see the opposite side of this, such as the person I've spoken about him previously on our broadcast. He, he's here in Connecticut and he owns a couple of businesses. He invested in a restaurant business with two partners. And it was one of the partners, the managing member, was a complete dipshit. And the business failed. Uh, not really because of COVID. We'll leave it at that. And mm-hmm. our client is freaking out because he's terrified that the federal government will do something with this defaulted loan because his partners have made no attempt to communicate with the SBA, to make a, a payment arrangement with the SBA. They've just let the loan just fall away. They sold They sold the, the fixtures. Into the ether. They sold the fixtures for the business. They sold the bit. They got rid of the business. They didn't even talk to the SBA. Hey, we're selling the business because we failed. Not, they're just ignoring the federal government. And our guy is having a complete heart attack mm-hmm. for good reason, because he's terrified that at some point in the future, some government agent is going to catch up to, the, to him and his yeah. two partners, and he's going to have liens put against his other businesses, against his tax return refunds, against his home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you see, there's so much confusion. And we lay that at the door of the Small Business Administration. Yeah. Which lets me segue right into my next point. Which is? If you want to get something simple done with the SBA about your COVID-19 EIDL, nothing is simple with Mm -hmm. the SBA. Nothing simple. Uh, So we found a uh, testimony from uh, Florida, a hearing in Florida about Hurricane Ian. Oh, right. Okay. And where is that? Oh boy. Representative Byron Daniels of Florida was questioning uh, government authorities, FEMA. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Mr. Sanchez from the SBA and another party. I don't know what agency they're with. And he said to Mr. Sanchez, quote, and this is for natural disaster loans, not COVID 19. He said, How are you going to manage all these disasters? You don't have enough people. Uh To his credit, I must say, Mr. Sanchez, who I've learned is actually behind the scenes doing a pretty reasonably great job trying to fix something that's immensely broken. Uh, He and Ms. Guzman are really doing their best to streamline and, and improve communications. But there's so much. But again, I would ask Mr. Daniels of Florida, Congressman Daniels, as with the other congressman in the other video, please look in the mirror. Please talk to your cohort, your colleagues in Congress, because Mm -hmm. you all have not reauthorized the SBA in something like 20 years. So if you reauthorize and give them some more money, guess what they can do? You don't have to say you don't have enough people, because why? They can hire more people because they reauthorize, which means they grant more money to an already underfunded agency that does not have enough leadership and training to handle just regular. The, the When people have questions, when they come to us with the questions, they've already exhausted what resources they thought they had as a small business At with the this small business administration. Yeah. So I, you know, we may sound like a broken record on a lot of stuff because Nothing is changing when you're dealing with bureaucratic behavior and this is the way we've always done it mentality. Uh, I'm sorry, but nothing gets done. And, you know, well, you're assuming you're, you're talking to somebody in the SBA who actually has enough training or experience of the SBA to actually know how they used to do it. Sadly, what we too often encounter, such as the paralegal we spoke to a couple of months ago, who accused us of committing fraud because <laughs> she didn't understand that state of Florida issues, issues its own version of the UCC form, not the one that we got from SBA. Uh, uh, you know, you're assuming that the person has experience of the training. What we too often see, and this is one of the reasons why the SBA does not make it simple, is that the person who's handling the paperwork is overly bureaucratic or mm-hmm. Poorly trained, poorly trained, or doesn't understand the finer points of running a business. You know, David just, and David and Linda just now is a really good insight into what is missing with many SBA people. I brought up this topic about personal property, and two different professionals, an insurance broker 
and a CPA. Mm -hmm. Both came in with their perspectives about business property and how it's defined in their fields. Mm -hmm. But when you call the SBA, you don't get that kind of wealth of knowledge from people who have an understanding. In, in my experience, and as I have ranted about many times, the SBA treats small business owners and how you all should be running like like a simple business book that you got yeah. in you know, junior grade of high school. Mm -hmm. You took a business class. And again, according to just the agenda that we had prepared for our first onboard meeting with this new client here in Connecticut, there was so much in that meeting. The meeting ended up being over two hours and we could have kept talking easily for another hour or so just to kind of get some of the dust out of the engine that she was working with and things that had gone unattended because again, she has certain skills that runs the business that helps to earn money and revenue in the business. But there are a lot of other moving parts in a business. And you know, I, I'm just completely at a loss when I hear what people have gone through with dealing with the SBA. I, I don't know. I just, okay. I don't know. Uh, at a loss. David, um, I'm going to come to your question in a little bit, but I really, I because that's kind of complicated what you're asking. I just want to talk to you small business owners about the simple things that you may want to accomplish, such as selling your business, changing ownership uh maybe the contact person who used to be the who put the original application in whose email address maybe you don't have access to that email anymore for any number of reasons you know gmail's in the process of closing out a lot of inactive gmail accounts maybe, mm. you know uh maybe the person is no longer with your organization you know because maybe it was a bookkeeper or a manager not an owner and maybe that person is no longer with us at all Mm, and yeah. to accomplish these simple tasks of notifying the SBA, uh, again, the front line is the person you have to deal with and going through the menu of options on the phone to, to get to that person and hoping that the person you finally get is the person that has enough knowledge to get you through it. But then there's the packet of paperwork they send you. And... I'm just going to tell you, as as a trained loan officer and and two underwriters here sitting in front of you, this paperwork is overly complicated for the average small business owner because I have a hard time understanding it. I mean, I filed a UCC form with the wrong address because of the way the SBA prepared their UCC form that they gave to the client. They prepared it wrong and then told us that we filed at the wrong address. This is so they make not, not only is it a people problem, but it is also a systems problem. And again, Congress reauthorized the SBA so they can get more money, better training, better. But but hold on, hold, I want to I want no, I want to chime in because we you know we do a lot of writing here with the information we gather and trying to publish it in a way and. Writing is very difficult. Copywriting is very difficult. And where I'm going with this is... Post-closing blueprint? Um, well, th that goes without saying, because we do have a post-closing blueprint that covers any change that could happen in a business, plus just regular communication with the SBA when a change happens. But this is the thing. if w In conjunction to what you're saying, if SBA has to send documents that outline instructions or provides insight into a process that has to be accomplished by a small business owner who is preparing this stuff and and how bad is it for real like you just said it's very complicated when i used to underwrite uh business insurance and the you know the insurance companies too they would have forms to fill out and you know fine print with little boxes you had to check but sometimes the language was double negatives you know like did you not know that not this was that or not that right it's just like crazy stuff and even taking the insurance exam and they did that a lot double negatives so, I, so yeah they, they they could with everything they do they could certainly do a better job of providing 
more clear forms that the average person could understand and complete and better instructions with those. So, okay. So- Especially if business owners are on their own to do this. It's not like when you go to a bank, there's a banker there to help you. Or if you go to name any place where you you have assistance, this is like, again, DIY, good luck. And then you make a mistake and you're right, out in the right. cold. Okay, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to calm you down. All right, usually sorry, calm me down. Sorry, sorry. I do want to throw two compliments to the SBA. Okay. All right. And that's going to lead to a download. I got to make a, a note. A download that, minutes. that you can get. <laughs> Uh, a download that you can get with. Uh, d- did you prepare this download? It was with the contact, the phone number. For I don't know. I don't have a download for it. You, I, I don't know what you meant well, by I that. I asked you to create a download. I don't know what you meant by that, but I have a I, banner I, for I, it. I, no, I put a word document together for you to turn into a download. Oh, I missed that memo. Uh, you missed that memo. I absolutely missed that memo. I just saw that. There I love was- it how you say you read a lot. Apparently, <laughs> you don't read my scripts. You don't read my notes in HubSpot. Wow. Okay. So much. <laughs> uh, in that video with uh, Congressman Donalds from uh, Florida, uh, Francisco Sanchez Jr., who is the associate administrator for the SBA's Office of Disaster Recovery and Resilience, the ODRR, uh, Mr. Sanchez testified that SBA on the natural disaster loan applications is working diligently to streamline the processes and make it easier for people in disaster areas to get access to the funding that they so desperately need. Um, And I will say that in our recent interactions with the SBA on the COVID-19 EIDLs, I have been seeing since September of last year that step by step, the SBA does appear to be streamlining certain processes such as when you call and that's why i wanted to give you all access but i guess we'll post in the comments later i'll uh, figure it out and we'll is, is a it is a form that i created which gives you the phone number to call for which is right which there. is eight three three eight oh there it is eight thank you eight three three eight five three five six three eight but on the document i created i give you the menu so you know what the menu is before you call because Wow, I really miss that. Sounds like a great piece. <laughs> I don't know. It's in HubSpot. Uh, uh, okay, so I've noticed that when you call, the people who answer the phone, the frontline customer service reps, oh, I found generally it. are very much more professional, very much better trained and informative with better, and they actually know how to ask the questions of you to determine how they can help you, which is a big, big thing for the SBA. If you know what it was like to call the SBA uh, during the pandemic, <laughs> it was not like that. So kudos, SBA. You, there are some improvements that they're making. Um, I am so, gonna, I'm going to post this bit in the on the community tab. Uh, so that you, you don't have to wait for a download. And, and the reason I wanted you all to have the menu, the phone menu with this phone number here, you know, press one. You know, once you get past the select Spanish or English, then it goes to another menu and it says, if it's a natural disaster loan, press this number. If it's a COVID-19 EIDL, press that number. Once you press the COVID-19 EIDL number, I've given you the menu of options. You know, one through, I think it's, I think it's six or seven. And... It tells you, like, you know, one of the options is if you were approved, but you never received the funding. Uh, if you're having problems with the My SBA portal is another one. Uh, so, again, th- they've been improving stuff like this, make it easier access. But one thing I will tell you, the reason I want you to have it is because I want you to prepare for the call before you call. Uh-huh. Which means, number one, get your SBA disaster loan number on hand and make sure the person who submitted the original application, who's the initial contact for the application, that person must be on the phone. Whether that person is making the actual call or that person can authorize another party on the phone by saying to the SBA, I'm, you know, Henry Harrison and I'm the COVID-19 primary borrower on this loan, but I'm authorizing you to speak to Trevor or Linda of Aurora Consulting. You have permission to speak to them. So, 
primary initial person, number one, disaster loan number, number two, the primary person has to be on the phone. And then the other reason I give you the menu is so you can prepare as specifically as possible your question or your situation. Because what I have found is one of the reasons why folks get in trouble when they call the SBA is a lack of specificity. First of all, there's a lot of storytelling. There's a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. So we got to take that out of the mix. And secondly, is is a kind of fuzzy approach to what it is they need. Look, if it's about a change of ownership, you're saying, I'm Joe Blow. I have a COVID-19 EIDL. I'm the primary borrower. Here's the SBA disaster loan number. The reason I'm calling today is because I am selling my business. The reason I'm calling today is because I'm bringing in a partner. I'm, I'm requesting additional financing from a bank and I need a subordination agreement. Very clear and specific. And that customer service rep will able, be able to point you in the right direction, which is very important because according to an excellent rep I spoke to on Monday, the volume of calls they're receiving mm. is astounding. And the fact that you can call 833-853-5638 and get someone to pick up the phone pretty quickly. Once I I went through the menu, I had somebody on the phone in less than two minutes. This is, again, unheard of. And this is on a Monday morning I did this, when everybody's calling. Mm -hmm. And what this uh, very excellent service rep told me was that one of their roles on the front line with the call t- is to determine exactly what the business owner needs and to make sure that the primary bar is on the phone because they w- cannot and will not transfer you to the correct parse person in what's called CESC, which is the COVID servicing center, to get a, a senior person to assist you unless you've met those basic criteria. And the reason they're screening is because of the volume of calls. So Linda will put that in the community tab. You can download that later. Um, And I just wanted to finish this section about simple things with thank you, Truth Seeker. Thank you so much. Um, Well, actually, so David asks, what if the authorized person Mm -hmm. died or is in jail or for some reason? There is a workaround with that. And again, that right there is a very specific question. Um, In the case of this other business owner I mentioned earlier where his two business partners are knuckleheads, especially Uh the guy who was the manager, it turns out actually that that partner committed fraud because he did not put the two business partners on the loan application. He failed to disclose, which according to the application is subject to civil and criminal penalties. Uh And I explained this to our client. Uh, if all owners with a greater than 20% interest must have been on that application and this knucklehead didn't put the other two people on so that our client, when he calls, cannot, cannot get the SBA to give him any information on the loan. So David, I don't really know how SBA resolves it, but as with everything at the SBA, they have a process. I would guess it would be something like you'd have to prove the person is dead or the person is unavailable, I, I, you know, and that you're the true owner or something like that. Maybe legal documents. I'm not really sure. But I would guess the SBA is uh, has a process. For any folks who want assistance with that, you know, we offer a one-hour mm-hmm. paid phone consultation. But this is all also and in the blueprint. It's in the blueprint, but also if you want, if you call, I will call the SBA with you on the phone and we'll kind of try to sort that out, try to get the answer to that question. Okay, so okay. two final things in this topic. Two final things. SBA recently changed the hazard insurance rule for natural disaster loans. Astounding that after making all of you COVID-19 borrowers nuts to get insurance, including Uber drivers and, you know, Etsy crafts people making little doilies in their spare bedrooms who had to go out and get insurance. Apparently for now, for natural disasters, SBA is, uh, from my understanding, waiving that condition. I haven't confirmed it 100% yet, so don't really believe me yet until I, I'm sure of it. But that's my understanding is what's happened now. So I asked on Monday when I called the SBA, is that true also now for the COVID-19 loan? Does the does COVID-19 borrower still need to maintain housing insurance? You want to tell them what they want? 
Yes, it's on the banner. We already told them. <laughs> Spoiler Oops. alert! <laughs> Oops, there. <laughs> You know, I don't look at the banners. I'm looking at Which you because you, you're so pretty. Thank you. I'm but that's pretty. so weird. You you look at everyone's comments and then chime in on them. So I figured you'd see this big banner right in front oh, of yeah. you. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, <laughs> finally, and then I want to get to David's question about offering compromise. Uh, finally, you are required to ask the SBA for permission to sell your business, to change ownership. Yeah. And similar issues like that. It's not notifying the SBA. No, if you if you change your address, you can notify them if you change like your mailing address. But if you are changing the physical address, you got to get their permission. Mm-hmm. That's right. You know, you, your business is growing and that factory is now not big enough. And you're, you're, you're buying a building down the road that's a much bigger factory. And before you close on that, you have to get SBA's permission to grow your business and move down the well, they don't make it simple, folks. Buy our post closing blueprint because I cover all this stuff and you get free updates through December 2024. But we have a special offer for anybody show- watching the show tonight. Oh, did I prepare for that? Damn woman, you better have prepared. I better have, you prepared. Better have prepared. Well, even if I didn't, I can do it on the fly. The special offer is. If you are watching the broadcast tonight until 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. Tonight. Wow. It ends at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. I I don't think that's fair. We get a lot of people watch the replay. They watch the replay. Yeah, I know, but this is a live show. Well, we have right now, we have nine people. I would love for whoever is watching now so, to put in the comments if you want the discount because if no one's going to get so it. So it's a, ten, night, it's right a 10% now. discount. We sell the post-closing blueprint for $347. So you'd get a 10% discount. But also, you'd be buying it now at the current price point because we're raising the price soon. Yeah. I've got some new... Which, critical updates coming and i looked at the volume of work that i'm doing to provide these updates and anybody who bought the book already gets those for free and we have people who bought that all the way back till 2021 but so if you buy it now you can get that and you get the free updates but in a couple of weeks when i publish the new updates we're raising the price from 347 to 427 dollars for our expert guidebook you know, honestly, I, I know people are thinking how you're used to getting something for, you know, twenty four ninety nine or thirty four ninety nine or nineteen ninety nine or whatever. But honestly, this is like twenty five cents a day to invest in your business on something you have you have to do. You will not escape this lifetime with this loan as long as you live without having to contact the SBA. I am sure of it. The small business owner I spoke to today took out a $687,000 COVID-19 EIDL. She's a single member LLC that sells uh, custom print-on-demand craft type of uh, artwork and signage. And business is way down. But she's not a quitter. She's like, listen, she said, I'm I'm going to pay this loan off sooner rather than later. And I said to her, maybe you should talk to your accountant before you do that, because the interest might be tax deductible. Right, David? Uh, but whether she does or not, if if you have this loan, or if you're like our client with the two knucklehead business partners, there are so many different reasons why you need this expert guidebook that I've created. And there, I've, I've put so much in there. I put in templates, scripts on how to call the SBA, what to say when you get on the phone what to write to them when you send an email to request documents, specific instructions on how to set up your MySBA portal. It's It's already discounted. It's there. It's $313 with 10%. And I did make it. And how long are we running? I did. I made it for for uh, till tomorrow because I know people. What time tomorrow? I want to know what time. I, I maybe midnight. I don't know. I want. Okay, let's agree. Listen for people. Let's agree. Who made midnight it, for people who have made it this far, either live and or on the replay. They deserve to get this this offer. Okay, so. Fear of missing out, folks. All right. So you can purchase it now for, was it $313? Yeah. 
for uh, the, what that's in that is the discounted price through 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time on um, what is that August 24th actually midnight is yes no that's 25th Midnight's, tomorrow's the 20 midnight's 25th okay okay well I just I just I did make it I did make it so. And that means if you buy it now at the discounted price, you get all of the free updates. Because again, not only we're we offering it right now for 24 hours, a little more than 24 hours of the discount, but in a few weeks when the new updates come out, we're raising the price. It's gonna be over $400. $427 to be exact. Mm. And so, you know, you, you'll miss out on a lot. So we, get that. we get questions on a almost daily basis. I'm telling you. I want to answer David's question because okay. I don't have an answer, David. You see, the problem is. You want to answer with a non-answer. Because the SBA does not have an answer. Oh, see. Now, I know that mm. there are people. <laughs> David. <laughs> I love this guy. This is why we love David. <laughs> Make it 11.59 p.m. <laughs> uh I forgot where it was. Oh, offer oh. compromise. Okay, so in my conversations recently with SBA, what I understand is with loans that are in default or pending or in danger of default, uh, with business owners struggling to make payments, maybe they have the hardship payment and they, they can't really catch up. Uh, the SBA does not have a final understanding internally of how they're managing this. It's they're working. The, the, one of the really good reps that I spoke to, she said, "Look, Trevor, we're we're going to meetings here at, at the office every week, and this is uh -huh. this this young lady works in the uh, collateral department, so she is exposed to a lot of the uh, defaulted side of things, loans that are pending default or you know, soon to default or hardship and so forth." And she said, "We're having meetings every week where they're still trying to figure out what's going to happen, but." She outlined essentially the way it works is that the SBA will attempt to collect the debt up to a certain point, but ultimately, if they charge the debt off as a bad debt, it goes to the United States government's collection agency. And Linda, you want to tell them who the United States government's collection agency is? The IRS, and they don't mess around. The Internal Revenue Service. They will find you, even if you are. Well, they don't have to find you because <laughs> you see, if if you owe money to the government for any reason, if you owe child support, they find you. If you, you owe back taxes, they find you. If you have a defaulted federal loan, they find you. Okay, they don't have to find you, Linda, <laughs> because you are it's doing. No, no. Okay. okay. I know, I know that, but we don't have to be dry, man, because this is boring stuff. When you file your tax return, and if you're get getting uh, a refund, the S the IRS will just take that refund to pay off the debt. And it is my understanding, David, that the SBA is not authorized to do an offer. Probably because they don't know how to do it. <laughs> but, but the here, IRS does. But here's the other side of this. We... We showed it in the previous broad in broadcast two weeks ago. Senator Joni Ernst uh, and another senator from Arizona, and I think Senator Cornyn from Texas. I don't know. A couple of senators have sent letters admonishing the SBA mm -hmm. to collect on all these debts, even debts below $100,000. Dollars. We have that in a download. Okay, and we as have that Truth Seeker says, they're going to get their money. Yep. So, folks, you need our guidebook because our guidebook will help you at least reduce your anxiety. If your business is in trouble, you want to understand about how to speak to the SBA about it, what's offered by the SBA. You know, as I discover factually what the SBA is offering, like to answer David's question with a real factual answer, it's going to go in the guidebook and it's going to mm -hmm. go in there through December of 2024. So if you buy it now at the amazing discounted price until midnight tomorrow, you get the free update. Yeah. Yeah. And because we're still learning just how dysfunctional I mean, we're talking, we've been talking to the SBA since May, uh, March of 2020, but even before that, we were dealing with the SBA when a business loan was going through a bank. 
and they made the banks crazy because of that the SBA can be crazy with their with their process and so on. I don't know if you still have it available, but what? we had a CPA in Texas contact us recently. She purchased the post-closing blueprint, and then she scheduled a one-hour uh, paid phone consultation with us, and she raved about our yeah. guidebook. She said every CPA everywhere yeah. should have Aurora Consulting's I post-closing blueprint. I have it right there. Here's what Pamela said. The blueprint is the bomb. I have never seen a comprehensible, approachable reference tool available on doing... Comprehensive, approachable. You com- There's no comprehensible. Okay, you know, that is, it, <laughs> these glasses are not great for reading tiny print that far away. Uh, on doing business with the SBA that compares to this. Every CPA should get their hands on this material because those of us who think we know the rules usually find out how little we know once we read the blueprint. Mm. SBA is still writing the rules, so we all need help in providing our clients the best advice. It is an invaluable reference tool. Pamela J. Davis Vaughn, CPA. And this is a woman who has owned multiple businesses, not just her CPA practice, other businesses and has obtained other types of SBA financing. So she's a bit of an expert in her own right, having a lot of experience with the SBA, with lenders giving her businesses, SBA loans giving her clients, SBA loans. And here she is raving about our guidebook mm-hmm. for the COVID-19 EIDL. So again, if you don't believe us, read Pamela's review or go to our Google page and read our reviews because our reputation speaks for itself. Okay. All right. Speaking of reputation. ERC. Hold on. I have to I have to get another prop. Just point to the elephant in the room. Wait. This way. There we go. What's the prop? Oh, my gosh. That is a week old. That was my, that was my birthday balloon. This is the prop. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. I can't believe there's so still air in that thing. Just like it's I called can't helium. How much hot air you got? It's helium. All right. So it was Linda's birthday, and uh, I, I had a birthday party for her here at the house, and I invited a couple of friends over, and and our best friend Marianne, who's our chef friend. She and I grilled veggies and chicken and made summer corn salad. It was a lot of fun. And it, we had the party on a Sunday. So I went down into town uh, to uh, to the party store to get some party hats and decorations and balloons. What what does this have to do? We have a very important question okay. here. I want to get Here's to what it has to do. So I said to the guy, I want I want Aurora colors. Oh yes. Here I want we go. The, I want colors of the Aurora Borealis on the balloon. All right? So this is the balloon that we picked out. And he said I said, because that's the name of our business, Aurora. He goes, so what does Aurora do? I said, well, we're business consultants, but primarily we focus on the COVID-19 programs and natural disaster loans and the SBA. He goes, what do you think of ERC? I said, ERC is fantastic. If you haven't applied for it, you should definitely do that. You can still apply. It's not too late. You have until 2024 and 2025, depending on what tax year. Oh, spoke to my CPA. He goes, the the ERC is a scam. I said, the ERC is not a scam. The ERC is a is a legitimate uh, re- tax refundable tax credit from the IRS. I said there are scammers out there. That's the scam. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to read to you. Uh, if your phones are not blowing up every day with these telemarketers calling you about the ERC program, they call me, uh, and uh, we have couple of images to share here i i snapped oh, oh, photos yes yes, yes. um so eric, er, eric i'm gonna get to your question we'll get in to a moment. question yes uh the brand uh the i'm sorry the you, you want the one that doesn't say voicemail first the one that says voicemail first yes, yes. okay here so i snapped this on my iphone um and here's the message hi it's michelle miller with easy returns i still need to speak with you about submitting our your company's refund credit it looks like there could be and this is the part this is the scam part right here it looks like there could be a significant amount of money owed to your business but i do need to go over the changes that have recently happened blah 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 okay let's pop the next one up hey this is Kenneth with blah 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 
We still hear, oh, your business should be entitled to retroactively claim the WT employee we have on payroll. This is for 2020. If you have a few minutes, so we can update you with the total refund amount going back to your business. Okay. <laughs> so going back to Balloon Guy, he says to me, I got a call from one of these guys. And he asked me a couple of questions and he said, oh, I can get, you know, $235,000. And I called my CPA. My CPA said, how the hell does he know that if he hasn't looked at any paperwork? He's, CPA said, did you submit paperwork? And the balloon guy said, I didn't submit any paperwork. Balloon guy was right. How do they know? Mm -hmm. You know what? They don't know. They are telemarketing scammers. Mm -hmm. Do not trust them because the IRS. And we have another download from our friend Joe Paldino, CPA. Please tell me you have that download. Hello. Which down? I was okay. Reading. Listen, I, I know right. you want to, but, but I'm. I'm what, gonna what, get, we're going to get to the questions. I know. What? Which down? See, we're going to get the questions. Don't lose your brains. The brains Cut are losing. It out. Okay. Cut it out. All right. Which which screenshot? The Joe Paldino. It's not a screenshot. It's oh. a download. Yes, I have the download. Okay. So Joe Paldino in uh, New York is our CPA, and we've referred many clients to him, and he's excellent. And I get his newsletters, and. Uh, so we're, we're going to give you a snapshot of his newsletter. And if you want to speak with him, he does free consultations. You can click through on the link. But here's what it says in his newsletter this week. Plans are underway by the IRS to review more than 2 million claims for the employee retention credit, the ERC, with special attention being given to new applications. Are you all right? No, not really. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> This COVID-19 relief measure, commonly referred to as the ERC, is now fully under the IRS spotlight. To receive the credit eligibility, your business had to be shut down by the government or by a government order or have a calculated decline in gross receipts or qualify as a recovery startup business in identified calendar quarters in other words your business was not open before the pandemic and you opened it up you know and it falls into a category of qualified startup yes it is true and this is what the balloon guy said to me he said oh i hear the irs my cpa said the irs is is auditing everybody and the penalties are going to be crazy and they can put you in jail i'm not really sure they can put you in jail but but paying back and the IRS is not kidding around. They are giving these applications extra scrutiny because of the scammers, like those two voicemails I showed you. So if you are going to hire somebody to do your ERC, please check out their background, check out their reputation. If you want a referral, you can find it on our website, auroraconsulting.biz. We have a page dedicated to the ERC. We have a free download on our website for the ERC eligibility fact sheet. I so, put it in the okay. comments. I, You know what? I know and, the link was there for Paldino's, and I don't know what happened to okay. it. Okay. Well, we'll get that. I'll up. get that we'll on get the, the community, community tab. tab. So the company that we've referred a couple of clients to has done a spectacular job. They do legitimate work and there's no nonsense. You should never pay any fees up front. And the problem also is that why the IRS is auditing so many of these is that the 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 scammers are sending in documents that violate the, the guidelines of the program without getting overly complicated on this. So please Please be very careful. Okay, I want to answer Eric. I just want to, if you're question. still watching the person that just bought the blueprint, thank you very, very Someone much. just bought the blueprint? Yes. Woo thank you. Trusting us and taking advantage of this offer. Thank you so much. Because it will continue to be expanded with all scenarios that we run across that are actual and real in real time including, with real businesses. Including Eric Leaf Black. Yes. To answer your question. Yes, 
I go into collateral in great detail. Excruciating. Okay? And thank you for bringing up the topic of misinformation, Eric. So that gives me a chance to proselytize once more about our reputation. So we started out our broadcast tomorrow, this evening when I went on a, a, on a roll about who we are. Insurance broker, retired mortgage banker, decades of experience, and the information that we share here on our YouTube videos, on our consultation calls, on our content products, including, Eric, the post-closing guidebook, post-closing blueprint, is all derived from real-time, real-world experiences. We are working on these week in and week out. Actual phone Even calls. the program is over, we are still assisting small business owners in real time to navigate the SBA on their COVID-19 EIDL questions and processes. We just closed the transaction a couple of weeks back where the business owner wanted to sell some of the business assets. They were actually music publishing rights. And he wanted to sell a portion of those valued at a little over 300,000. And he had a $90,000 COVID-19 idea. So we want to do a partial collateral lien release. And we got through it and SBA changed the rules and made him pay off the entire loan, which was... That was yeah. sneaky. That so was that's sneaky. in the guidebook now because of that experience. And that's why we're offering the updates through the end of 2024. Because as I experience... <clears throat> excuse me. As I experience these situations Toshiba. in real time. Thank you. Me. Thanks to Sheba. Look at that. He knows. Wait, how do I do this? Right there. I can't ever do the opposite. I, I can't do it either. I, I suck at <laughs> Oops. <laughs> uh, uh, so, Eric. Um, yeah. And in fact, I just want to go back for Eric. Can you go to the uh, the screenshot of the uh, loan agreement again that we used for... For the collateral. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Here we so, go. So, Eric... This is how deep I go. So I did a phone consultation today with a business owner in Texas, uh, as we do paid phone consultations as well, when, if necessary, uh, not only do you get to pick my brains and I answer your question and kind of walk you through whatever challenge or question you have, but if necessary, I'll call the SBA with you on the phone to get an answer to your question. Uh, in this case, she just needed to understand that her personal car was not collateral under the $687,000 COVID-19 EIDL she got. But seeing this paragraph in the loan agreement, she had a meltdown thinking that her car, you know, her, her, her puppy dog, her, her mom's antique tea china set. All right. You're now, don't be so hyperbole. The elephant in the room. <laughs> oh yeah. Elephant. <laughs> uh, was all collateral, and I was able to talk her off the ledge and, and uh, reassure her that it's not. So, yes, I do an extensive uh, look-see on the whole collateral. But also things, Eric, things like there's a whole chapter on how to speak to the SBA agent, and there's a section in the chapter called Beware of SBA reps of the things that they would say. You know, I'm famous on this broadcast for saying if you have one question and you ask five SBA agents the one question, you'll get 10 answers. Different answers. I, you know, we do these uh, exaggerated because then I'm, I'll make a gif out of it. And because I haven't seen the one yet where I was at. Uh, oh, the it's there. Last, last time. I think. All right. Next and all, not oh, yeah. and possibly last yes. for this evening's program is PPP forgiveness. If you've got a Paycheck Protection Program loan, I have no banner for that. I don't know why, because you we had this for a couple of days. <laughs> um, hold on, just Eric, you are quite welcome. And then I see there's another comment here. That's really interesting. I know a lot of business owners are worried about personal bank accounts, home equity, et cetera, especially possibly strategic bankruptcy. Okay. And Eric, you are not wrong. The attorneys do not have the answers, but we found an attorney who does, by the way. And so we are not allowed to give legal advice because that's actually a felony. If you're not an attorney, you can't give legal advice. Did you all know that? I did. 
Oh, um, I, did, I just found the Paldino uh, email that I'm going to put in the comments as well as the community tab because it's about ERC that we just finished talking about and so vital for you to be armed to know to not engage with these spammers. David wants to know who's a good ERC company to use. David, shoot Linda an email. Send me an email. She'll connect you with Peter. Linda at auroraconsulting.biz. Uh, we've tested him out. I've actually known him for a long time from when I used to work in Westchester County, New York. And this is all he does now. So send me an email, Linda at auroraconsulting.biz. I know you have my email anyway. Also on our website, auroraconsulting.biz, we have an ERC page. There's a free, uh, excuse me, a free download there with an eligibility section. You can determine if your business is eligible and fill out a contact form and we will immediately put you in touch with the ERC person that we have recommended previously who did a fantastic job. Um, so I want to go back to this. So what you're talking about here, Eric, is what's called personal guarantee. And we talked about this in detail in our last program, but and it's covered in extreme detail in the guidebook. But essentially, a personal guarantee gives the SBA the right to get a judgment against personal assets of the business owners after the business has been liquidated for the purpose of paying off the EIDL balance. It's a lot like a mortgage. So if you have a mortgage on a house and the mortgage goes to foreclosure, and let's say the mortgage balance is 400,000 and the bank goes to the auction and sells the house on the courthouse steps for 300,000, leaving a deficiency of $100,000, the difference between what the bank got for selling the house and what is owed. Under the mortgage note, uh, an agreement, the, the mortgage, the uh, under the note, the bank has the right to go after the homeowner and sue them in court and obtain a deficiency judgment for that $100,000. Does Do banks do that? Not, not always, but. So that's what a personal guarantee means, that if a loan, if an SBA loan of any type defaults, then if the business assets are sold, whether the business owner sells the business assets herself, uh, whether uh, the SBA has to come in and, and seize the assets and liquidate them, and I don't know if they have a mechanism for doing that, but according to the loan agreement, they can do it. Uh, and then the assets are sold for less than the balance of the loan, then if the loan has a personal guarantee, which means technically, as per the SBA, during the pandemic, loans of $200,000 and $1 and up. Loans of $200,000 and less, no personal guarantee. Loans above $200,000, there's a personal guarantee. So what we found, a lot of business owners didn't take the loans more than two hundred because they were afraid of the personal guarantee. And I kept telling people, you're nuts. If you need this money to keep your business alive, you know, personal guarantee is the least of your issues. If, especially if you own a house, it's exactly the same concept. And frankly, if you're in that much trouble with the loans defaulting and, and you can't pay because the business has failed, you got bigger problems anyway. Because SBA is not your only creditor. You know, mm. you probably have back taxes, payroll taxes due, all kinds of stuff. So these, are, you know, it's only one part of your problem. So worrying about a personal guarantee, worrying about, as Eric points out here, uh, personal bank accounts, home equity being seized in a legal action is the least of your worries if, you, if your business has failed, right? And bankruptcy... While it, I am a strong advocate for bankruptcy, I, you know, I, I'm, credit is one of my areas of special expertise from my career as a mortgage banker. And I used to sit with people who, who would want to buy a house and I'd run their credit and say, I'm so sorry. You know, there's things you need to do. Do this, do that, do that. Call me back in a year and a half. But do not hire a credit repair. Yeah, don't, don't hire a credit repair. And, and they would say, you know, or sometimes I would say to people, look, you know, maybe you should just go hire an attorney and file bankruptcy. And then you can come back after with the FHA program, come back after two years and buy a house. Oh, I don't want to do that because it's going to ruin my credit. I'm like, your credit is already ruined. 
You're worrying about something that is not germane to the issue at hand. And that, Eric, is, and that's why I thank you so much for introducing this topic into the program tonight, because that is what how I feel about the collateral and the personal guarantee issues. Mm -hmm. Worrying about them, unless you have to, like with the business owner in Dallas this morning, where she wanted to sell a car, and she didn't understand that that was not considered collateral. Mm -hmm. You know, unless it's a question like that, generally speaking, if the business is collapsing... It, there are lots of other problems yes. relevant to that, right? So while I'm an advocate for bankruptcy, you know, sometimes bankruptcy is not the way to go because maybe you want to restructure them. So you, you do the type of bankruptcy that allows for restructuring the business, right? Maybe you don't want to have bankruptcy for a variety of reasons. So whether the attorneys know what to do or not isn't germane. Again, in the guidebook, we show you how to speak to the SBA and what's called loan remediation, how to negotiate with them as a creditor and say, look, I can't afford to pay you. So what are we going to do here? Now, again, as I said earlier, it appears the SBA is just still working out these, these processes. It's not fully formed. And so our guide, we want our guide for you to be your first stop go-to reference before you interact with the SBA for anything. Mm -hmm. You want to ask the SBA what time of day it is? Read our guidebook first. Right. Right? Exactly. And because, you know, listen, I don't have children, but if I had children, I would want them to be business owners who are proactive <laughs> to understand what resources they have at hand to handle these complicated processes. Now, can we go to Toshiba? Are you I done with that? I can't answer Toshiba. I can't answer that question. I'm not an attorney. Oh yeah. So yeah. As far as, but it is in the guidebook. And and uh, well, Toshiba, email what, what, me. What we do in the guidebook is because he has the guidebook. So read the bankruptcy and the, then the, the bankruptcy section Toshiba in the guidebook isn't going to be really modified much beyond what I've done in there already. Which essentially is, I found an attorney here on YouTube. Mm -hmm. She's in Georgia. She is excellent. And she uh, talks about the COVID-19 EIDL and how and if and when that can be incorporated into bankruptcy. So I would leave that in her hands. And what I did in the guidebook, Toshiba, if you go to that chapter, there's a link. Because if, if for folks who have not purchased the guidebook, when you purchase it, you will discover it is a PDF it's an electronic mm -hmm. book. We had somebody recently who purchased it and contacted and said, "When is the book going to get here?" We're like, "It's it's not a book. We don't it's, we didn't publish a, it's, a hard book. It's a it's a immediate access, right? And the beauty of the PDF is, first of all, it allows us to update it for you through mm -hmm. December 2024 for free. And secondly, Eric, you're quite welcome. It's our pleasure. That's why we're here and we thank you. And I hope you'll subscribe and click the bell. Yes, the alert. please. Um, but the, the other reason we like the PDF is because as Toshiba is about to find out, when you go to the chapter in, on bankruptcy, there's a link to that attorney's YouTube channel. You just click on it and, and it should, depending on your browser, it should just open up into YouTube and you can watch her video, the video where she talks about uh, bankruptcy for the COVID-19 EIDL. EIDL. Yeah. EIDL. Mm -hmm. EIDL. All right. Um, so again, I just want to touch base very quickly before we go on PPP forgiveness. If you got a PPP loan with the five-year term, the 60, because if you remember, the PPP was initially... Um, it was two years, 24 months. Was it 24 months, I think? And then the second, they, they modified it to 60 months or a five-year term. If you got a five-year PPP at 1% interest, you can still apply for forgiveness, folks, even if you've been making payments on it. What, Trevor? Are you nuts? Are you crazy? No, I'm not. Well, I, am I crazy? You are. That is absolutely true. But you can <laughs> apply for forgiveness. And, you know, on the last... Oh, Toshiba. Dude, you know we love you, man. Especially because, you know, Toshiba. I told you the story. When I worked at Crazy Eddie, I would put Toshiba TV monitors in all of my customer service departments in the new stores. Well, we, we know Toshiba's real name. He was like, I don't know why I still have this username. I haven't worked at Toshiba well, in 20 years. I don't care what your name is. You'll always be Toshiba to me. <laughs> 
Oh boy. Okay, so PPP forgiveness. Um, on our last broadcast, we talked about uh, SBA's Inspector General and his his document that he provided to Congress, which we have somewhere on our YouTube channel as a download. And it's a you know it's about all the fraud and all the convictions. And I think we did the math, David. David, didn't we do the math on the convictions? Michael was on that night too. And the, the convictions relative to all the COVID loans that were made, the conviction, the amount of people they actually put in jail is like point oh 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 one. Uh, yes. Now, look. but Mr. Ware talked about how they're figuring out for it. And one of the things they said was, oh, okay, PPP loans that haven't been forgiven yet. What okay. do you mean? How is that? How well, are they because that the out? Office of Inspector General at the SBA is saying an indicator of fraud on the PPP program is if the borrower did not apply for forgiveness. They think that means that it's a fraudulent loan. Oh, and we talked about how that may not be the case because they may be running the business and they don't, they've been put procrastinating. On forgiveness. It's, because it's actually, people have hired us to do the PPP forgiveness because they're like, I'm too busy to deal with this And I shit. have, by the way, a 100% approval rate on my PPP forgiveness application because I'm a nut with the math and the paperwork. But my, my contention is that, again, SBA, especially the Inspector General, are so out of touch with the reality of what goes on out here in the business world, they don't even know. This is the same guy who said that a lot of business, Mr. Ware said a lot of businesses got PPP loans they weren't entitled to get because they don't have employees. Well, just because he didn't understand that a lot of small business owners who pay people on 1099 think those people are employees, and they're not. You know, so instead of just casting this wide net and thinking everybody's a criminal, folks in Washington, how about you all wake up and realize if people haven't applied for forgiveness yet, it's probably because they don't know they can still do it. And that's why we're messaging to you all tonight. And Linda's going to cut this out and make this into videos and gifts and memes and stuff. <laughs> and and you can still apply if you have a five year term PPP loan. You can apply right up all the way to the end. And if you've made payments you know what happens once your ppp loan is forgiven all payments you've made up to that point get refunded to you by the lender in full what yes because what happens when the loan is so you get let's say you got a thirty-two thousand dollar ppp loan right and you've been making payments on it every month at one percent interest and then you apply for forgiveness you've made seven payments you apply for forgiveness and it gets approved. What the SBA does is pays to your PPP lender the full $32,000. So the, the lender's not allowed by law to keep the 32 and keep your seven payments you've made. They have to refund you all payments you've made up to that point. We've seen it happen with clients that were making payments and we got them the forgiveness approved. So it is not too late. And if you have questions about it, you can book an appointment with me on the phone. Uh, I don't know what Truth Seeker is saying correct, but I love it. Thank you. <laughs> I love to be told Truth Seeker that I'm correct. Uh, you can book a, a, a one hour phone consultation with me and I'll run it through with you and tell you if... Uh, if the uh, if you're eligible for PPP forgiveness, I'm done talking, Linda Ray. Take it away, Ray. Well, I just emailed David the contact for the trustworthy contact that we have uh, for ERC. I think we have overstayed our welcome here with an hour and 30 minutes. It's 10 o'clock here on the East Coast, and we have to get up early tomorrow. No, we don't. Yes, we do. Oh, we do. <laughs> Nuts. So we just want to say thank you to everyone who is here. We know we're preaching to the choir on all the things that it takes to run a business and our pontificating of being proactive to minimize the problems that happen when we avoid and ignore problems before they start and in the beginning of when they surface and rear their ugly head. And we so appreciate if you could go to our Simple Sense for Small Business channel. It's just youtube.com slash small business advice. Well, at sign small business advice. 
where we try to talk about mistakes we've seen that we've made so you don't have to. Uh, we took a little hiatus on that channel for summer because we've been focusing here with all the EIDL chaos and conundrum that we face on a daily basis with people and trying to solve problems and learning so we can then share with you. One thing we ask is if anything that we have helped you with that has educated you or enlightened you or entertained you to please go to our, you know, Google Aurora Consulting LLC and please leave a review. Please subscribe to this channel. If anything we have provided is of value, please like this video that you're watching right now. And what else can I say? Oh, and you know, go to our auroraconsulting.biz. We have tons of free resources and paid products. When you pay for things we have offered you, it helps us be able to come here for free and talk to you and share what insights we have found and developments that have occurred. So I have one I final covered. thought to share with you. Thank you. It was fantastic. Actually. Thank you. Kind of, <laughs> kind of speechless. <laughs> uh, I have one final thought to share. And again, it goes back to what I said earlier in our broadcast. We are working on files week in and week out. We are interacting with the SBA. We are interacting with you on this show when we answer questions and we're hearing real world situations. We are interacting with people who hire us for the, for the consultation call or actually hire us to manage a process with the SBA. And that, all of that experience informs the expert advice that we give to you. And so we thank you for tuning in to our YouTube channel to watch our videos and reaching out to us for assistance. And the final thought I have is this. Don't be afraid of the government programs. Don't be the balloon guy who said, mm -hmm. it's a scam. I'm not going to apply for it. My CPA said I shouldn't apply for it. I said, I said, you're wrong, because if you're using the right people, uh, they will not get you in trouble. They will get you the money and you're entitled to get this money. The Congress passed the law to get, make this money available mm -hmm. to you. Don't be afraid that when you hear the headlines that the IRS is giving extra scrutiny to these loan applications, these ERC applications. Don't be afraid when you hear that the Office of the Inspector General at SBA considers it a fraudulent activity that you haven't applied for forgiveness yet. Apply for the forgiveness. Don't be afraid to call the SBA. Follow our advice. Whether you buy our guidebook or you watch our videos, we give you the advice that you need, the expert advice, to remove the fear and anxiety mm -hmm. of dealing with these government programs. Early days, I had someone on the phone say to me, Trevor, I just don't want to do the wrong thing and get in trouble with the federal government. I said, if you are not lying to them mm -hmm. and you make a mistake here or there, it's just, that's just perfectly human of you. Mistakes can be remedied with the government. It's complicated sometimes, but it can be remedied. You should not be afraid of it. And so here, what we're here to do is to give you the information you need to remove that fear and anxiety. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you so much, everybody. Stay well, stay healthy, stay safe. Happy birthday, Linda. Till next time. My birthday was a week ago. I still like saying it. <laughs> <laughs>